This is 4.08, part 2. Again, I'm expecting that you're copying this stuff down because the only way to really learn it is to do it yourself. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the next problem. If a 54-gram sheet of aluminum foil oxidizes completely in excess oxygen, how many grams of aluminum oxide will be formed? All right, what do we start with? 54 grams of aluminum. We make it a fraction over 1. What has to be at the bottom of our next fraction has to be grams of aluminum. And now let's look what we're converting to. Well, we want to go to aluminum oxide, which is this one. And so anytime we need to switch from one chemical to the next, what do we need to use? We need to use moles. And specifically, we want moles of aluminum. How many grams of aluminum are there in one mole of aluminum? If we look at our periodic table, it is 26.98. Again, let's go to hundredths. That makes our answers more accurate. All right, and let's see. So we got rid of grams of aluminum. Now we want to go ahead and put what on the bottom of our next fraction? We're going to put moles of aluminum. And while our moles of aluminum are going to cancel off, what are we converting to? Well, we want to get to Al2O3, and specifically, how do we convert from one thing to another? The magic of the mole. So we look at our balanced chemical equation. How many Al2O3s do we have? We have two of them. And how many aluminums do we have? We have four in our balanced chemical equation. What has to go on the bottom of my next fraction, moles, but specifically of Al2O3. And what are we converting to? Uh, let's read again. We want grams. All right. So grams of what? Grams of uh, Al2O3. And that cancels off. In one mole, how many grams are there? Well, so we have al 2 so each aluminum is how much? Each aluminum is 26.98, and there's two of them, okay? And the rest of our formula is O3. So we have to add in the rest of our formula. Oxygen is how much? 16.00 times how many of them? Three. And so you're going to put that in your calculator. And you are going to get an answer of plus 16 times 3. Now be careful. You have to worry about order of operations. So if you're not sure if your calculator does it correctly, put it in twice. So 16 times 3 is 48. Okay? Times 2 plus 48 is 101.96. All right, 101.96 grams. That's how much one mole of aluminum oxide weighs. So 101.96. And we have grams of aluminum oxide. That's what we want for our answer. So, okay, let's get our calculator back out and put that in. So we are going to put in 54 times 1, times 2, times 101.96, divide it by everything on the bottom, which is 26.98, and we're also going to divide it by 4, and our final answer is 102.04, so I rounded up my 3, and what's the final unit, because that is very important, it's grams of Al2O3. Hit pause if you need to, copy down what you need to, and let's do the next problem. Carbon disulfide is an industrial solvent made from reacting coke, which is carbon, not coke like you hear of on TV, the drug, but um, they actually call forms of carbon coke, with sulfur dioxide gas. And there's our chemical equation, five solid carbons 
plus two sulfur dioxides, which are in the gas form, yield carbon disulfide and four of the carbon monoxide gases, molecules. If you need to make 152 grams of CS2, how many grams of carbon must you react with excess sulfur dioxide? All right, so start by writing down what you know. So 152 grams of CS2. All right, make it a fraction. What has to go on the bottom of my next fraction is, of course, grams of CS2. All right, now let's look what we're converting to. We want to go to grams of carbon. Okay, so we started with that. We want to go to carbon. Anytime we are switching from one chemical to the next, what do we need? The magic of the mole. But you have to start with the chemical that they gave you. So in one mole, how many grams of CS2 are there? All right, so there's one carbon. Each carbon weighs 12. And how much does each sulfur weigh? It's 32. So plus... 32, but there's two of them, so times 2 equals 32 times 2 plus 12 gives us 76. So 76 grams of CS2 for every mole. What has to go on the bottom of my next fraction? Moles of CS2. And what am I converting to again? I want to get to carbon. So again, the magic of the mole, moles of carbon. And let's look, how many carbons do I have per how many CS2s? The ratio is five to one. What has to go on the bottom of my next fraction? Moles of carbon. And then I go back again and check, what do I want for my final answer? I want grams. All right, so grams of carbon. Look on your periodic table. In one mole of carbon, there's how many grams? There are 12. All right, get out your calculator. Put everything in it. I got 152 times 1 times 5 times 12 divided by 76. My answer is 120. Okay, but not just 120, 120 what? Grams of carbon. So here's my final answer. Hit pause, make sure you got it all down. Our next equation that we're gonna do is hydrazine is a rocket fuel that reacts with oxygen. So we have hydrazine as a liquid plus oxygen gas yields nitrogen gas plus water as a gas or steam. If a test rocket carries one kilogram of hydrazine, what is the minimum amount of oxygen necessary to burn the hydrazine completely? All right, so you know the deal. Start with what you know. What do we know? We have one kilogram of N2H4. Put it over one. What has to go on the bottom of my next fraction? Well, it's got to be the same thing. Kilograms of n 2 H4. No, hang on. What do you notice is different about this problem? I got kilograms. We haven't worked with kilograms. Every time we go to the mole, what do we have for our unit? Grams. So we have to convert kilograms to what? We have to convert kilograms to grams of N2H4. So maybe you remember how to do this. Maybe you need to look at your metric staircase. And you'll see it goes kilo, hecto, deca, and then the base. And then obviously continues down with deci, centi, and milli. All right, so you're a little person. Where do you start? We start at kilograms. And we hop down to grams. So one, two, three. Three hops, three hops to the right. So I had one kilogram. I move that decimal. One, two, three. Three hops, three hops to the right, fill in with zeros, 
my new answer is a thousand. So one kilogram is the same as 1000 grams. Now again, you might have known that, but I had to review it because I know sometimes people forget. All right, so we have grams. Now we can get this party started. Yes, I use the term party very loosely. <laughs> All right, so it has to go on the bottom of my next fraction. Grams of N2H4. And yes, that's an N, not an M. All right. And what are we going to convert those grams to? Well, I started with that. I want to go to oxygen. All right, anytime I'm going to a different chemical, I need to go to the magic of the moles. So moles of N2H4. And I have one mole. Sorry, not sure why there's a one down there. I get from when I was scribbling before. How many grams are in one mole? All right. So each nitrogen is how much? 14. How many of them are there? There's two. Plus each hydrogen is how much? One. How many of them are there? Four. So 28, 29, 30, 31, 32 grams per mole. All right. What has to go on the bottom of my next fraction? It has to be moles of N2. H4. And what's going to be on the top of my next fraction? Well, again, what are we going to? We want to go to oxygen. All right. So oxygen is O2. So we have moles of O2. And look at your equation. What's my ratio? How many molecules of O2 do I have or moles of O2 for every molecules or moles? Yeah, it's just one to one. Look at that. Nice and easy. All right. What has to be on the bottom of my next fraction? It has to be moles specifically of O2. And go back to the story problem. What do they want us to find of O2? They want to know the minimum amount necessary to burn. So they want to know grams. All right, so I want grams of O2. All right, each oxygen is 16. How many are there in that molecule? Two. So my answer is 32 grams of oxygen for every mole. All right, get out your calculator. Put it in. So I have 1 times 1,000 times 1 times 1 times 32 divided by 32. And my answer is 1,000. Okay. Now, 1,000 what? It's 1,000 grams of O2. Now, I don't like this problem. Here's why. The fact that we started with 1,000 grams and we need exactly 1,000 grams of another chemical to get it to work out is so, so rare. Okay? The only reason it works is because of this. Because I had the molar mass is 32 because 14 times 2 plus 4 is the same as 16 times 2. That's the only reason it worked out that the amount we needed of one chemical is the same as the other chemical. Had we done decimals, it would have been off a little bit. But again, it's rare that it's like this, but once in a great while it will be. The other reason is we had that one-to-one -one ratio. So that's part of what kept them equal. But the big thing is they had the same molar mass which again is really rare. In fact, in my head, I keep adding this, like, did I mess this up? Did I mess this up? That's how rare it is. All right, so copy down what you need to. Hang on a second, I'll get rid of all my extra green squares. Okay, so there it is with less green squares so you can read it, but still the green squares to show you that, yeah, this is kind of a weird exception.